of course but this year we decided to be a lot more serious about calling ourselves filmmakers because when you make films you're a filmmaker it makes you a filmmaker um and i think that was something a little scary for me to say about myself but if we're gonna dream we might as well like dream big so um i thought we could just talk a little bit about why we love film so much and how it ended up being a part of like our legit dream. So um, it always helps me to start off with quotes. And then I came across this one from Christopher Nolan, which says, when you're starting out as a filmmaker, you have nothing to lose. You also have nothing to gain by being the same as everybody else. You have to have a voice. You have to have something to say about the things you're doing and it has to be sincere. Uh, Brian, for my birthday, got me a subscription to Masterclass, and I've been taking all of the courses. Quite a bit of them are on um, filmmaking, and I um, can't remember which instructor it was who said this, but they basically said the first film you make needs to be for you. That is the reason why we are really jumping into filmmaking, because I became obsessed with uh, creating films for our own family and our homeschool, which you guys have seen a little bit of that. Um, I've never really been able to jump into it like I wanted to, um, or just because I really wasn't sure how. But now I want to do that. I want to get into that a little bit more. And basically we have, we have all the tools that we need. Mm -hmm. So why not? Yeah, I think you've been always doing it you just didn't connect the dots of okay what I'm doing is a version of filmmaking and I think you recently started to give it a title or put yourself in that category I know but that's scary like to see yourself making like to see yourself making like an actual you film. make like little short films I do so I you do. gotta start somewhere I know yeah <laughs> so how did we get into um, Loving films together. I've always been a big fan of movies. When we were dating, uh, when we first got married, we go to Blockbuster all the time. Serena hated it. Um, Remember Blockbuster? Yeah, R.I.P. Blockbuster. <laughs> but I think she, then she's always like photography. We yeah. couldn't go anywhere dating. She would have the little Canon Polaroids. You have to take the pictures to Walmart to get it developed. She always had one of those with her. Wherever we went, the movies, out to dinner, we always had to stop and take a picture somewhere. So as she continued with photography, once the kids once the kids were born, they were small, it just kind of developed in, okay, instead of pictures all the time, let's take little videos to capture this. And then it developed from there. And then, she, again, she taught herself how to edit and different things. And all along, I've still, I've always liked films. We'd always watch movies. We always critique well, film, the movies when we watch them. This is the wrong music. I don't like this. Or I love yeah. that. This, so <laughs> Because we always took note of how it made us feel. What it made yeah. us think about. Um, 
if it went too quickly, if it it the made plot us development, want like you didn't do more. the character development or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we found ourselves like really digging deeper into that, and instead of simply being um, consumers of the films, we were just really starting to ask those questions more on the side of wanting to do it ourselves. Yes. Yeah. How does the process start? How do you even start? Like script writing. And yeah. That started to pique an interest. Yeah. For both of us. And I love photography. I really do. I love being able to like freeze those moments. But I always knew that there was something missing. There were like elements that you couldn't add to a photograph. You left a lot up to the imagination and um, a lot left out of the story. And I've always been fascinated with stories. I was a really big reader when I was younger want to get back to that. Homeschooling, I've really been able to get back into the story by simply um, doing that with the kids. And it really just reminded me of how much I love um, the anatomy of a story. that we got on, um, on filmmaking was this John Truby Presents the Anatomy of a Story. Um, so I probably read through about half of this and I need to just start from the beginning and read through the rest yeah. of it. But that really got me to the place where I thought, wow, like I could be a storyteller. Mm -hmm. um, and then by picking that dream back up and sharing it with Brian so much, he started really getting into it even more. Um, but for real, I just needed to justify my, uh, my desire to have more equipment. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a whole thing. Uh, yeah, it is a whole thing. So, uh, my cameras, the different types of cameras I have, we recently got a drone, uh, new lenses, um, just really being able to use these different tools to, um, think of these stories that we would want to tell. So, um. Once that dream was kind of like sparked back in me and then I kind of got him on board, I talked about it so much that the kids really just started following suit. Yeah. Um, and I noticed that there were perspectives there um, that weren't just mine, it was all of ours collectively that I became obsessed with. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you'll see in a lot of our Falco family films, um, you see that visual element, you see the movement, the focus. Um, I'm trying to do the whole uh, voiceover and mm -hmm. script writing. And trying also- Trying to involve the kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. also involving the kids, hearing their voices and getting their perspectives and getting them to write parts of the script. Mm -hmm. So we want to do more of that because we truly do have stories um, to tell. And what makes them really special is telling them together. Um, and that was kind of where it was born, and we became, you know, we transformed from, we transformed from this family of homeschoolers to a family of homeschooling filmmakers, yeah. um, or filmmakers who homeschool. <laughs> Layer of rock. Mine looked totally different. Could be. These have tried here before. 
Can't wait. Class, I have all of the courses. <laughs> That's a lot of ink, by the way. I would just like to. But it's worth out. it. Okay, think about it, you guys. If you were going to actually put yourself through a film course. school or a course, mm -hmm. like this is a fraction of the cost to do so. And I like that freedom. I like that freedom to be able to pick up something um, that you're interested in learning more about and finding a tool to help you learn more about it. I have all of my. Um, my course syllabus, I have all of them kind of separated and ready for us to learn together and complete the activities together. My goal here, um, I get asked about curriculum all the time, which you get in homeschool yeah. because most people think that homeschool starts or, you know, schooling or learning starts with the curriculum. Um, and I guess we do have a small course of study, but really it is about finding out what it is that you're interested in and what you want to learn more about and then just building that yourself so this is what we're going to be doing and all of this is first going to go through us and then we're going to refine things and uh, pull out different activities that the kids can be a part of and let that be a part of their studies too so i do have our first film in mind i have a title mm -hmm. um, i have a general outline yeah. um I'm not ready to share yet, though. You're not, not going to share? <laughs> no. You're not putting it out there yet? Okay. I will say that it is about education. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what I'll say. That's all we're saying. That's all we're it, saying right now. It's about education. Yes. All right. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm excited about it. So, here's some more of the quotes that I really like. Um, Robert Breston says, Make visible what, without you, might perhaps never have been seen. I think that's one thing I'm really excited about because there's lots of movies out there, there's lots of stories out there, but then I always think, like, inside, if I don't do it, if we don't do it together... And the story may never be, be told in that perspective. Yeah. yeah, and how powerful of an idea is that for everyone? Because as many people out there that are doing certain things, if you don't do your part, then that story will never be told so yeah I loved that one uh, Brene Brown says unused creativity is not benign it metastasizes it turns into grief rage judgment sorrow shame etc I liked that because a lot of people think they're not creative and that's not true um, I think we all have a tremendous amount of creativity if you don't get it out ways. it manifests in other ways exactly yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I really do think that the more you use your creativity, the happier you will be. Mm -hmm. um, the more happiness you bring to your life. Just like I think that your form of creativity lately has been in coaching Cameron's basketball team. Yeah. That has been fun. Yeah. yeah. And so the more you do that, the more happiness you brought into your life. And that's part of the story that you'll be able to tell. So this one um, says, a story should have a beginning, a middle, and an end, but not necessarily in that order. And I love that. You guys know that we are the Falco family. And just in case you weren't sure, the Falco family stands for... Faith and Love Life Company. Yes, so we are all about faith and love over here. And for, in the quote, it basically just says that this is our story and there is a beginning, a middle, and an end, but it's not necessarily in that order. And for us, like, faith comes first. Mm -hmm. And faith is kind of like a representation of the ending, mm -hmm. you know? So if we're living with the end in mind, the end result in mind, you're telling the story kind of out of order, mm -hmm. but it's still a story. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I like that. Until like the last couple of years though, I've always just been an avid movie lover. I've never looked at uh, movies from like a filmmaking perspective until Serena started these and just seeing her go through the process, you know, you just sit down and she'd have this footage and 
again, you leave her alone in a room for a couple hours and you come back and now she has this this mini movie with editing and transitions and filters and voiceovers and it really started to spark my interest of okay how is she putting together the story how is she deciding how she wants it to look and so forth so that this over the last couple of years it has really kind of gotten me more involved so trying to learn how to edit and interested in the books how to put you know formation of a story together script characters stuff like that i'm kind of into that now how did you think of this how did you develop the characters where did the ideas come from how long did this whole process take so and I really, I like what he adds to like our dream of filmmaking because I feel like I pay attention to a lot of the details of your surrounding and very thoughtful and mm -hmm. forward thinking. But Brian is really amazing at paying attention to people. Like Brian's the ultimate people watcher. And that's important. Like that's really important for character development. Um, in paying attention to how they walk, how they move, how they talk, what they wear, um, how they interact with people. Whereas I am more of um, paying attention to the environment and the overall theme of a movie or a story. I feel like he brings a lot more of those ideas uh, to the table, which you need. <laughs> so I feel like I have one part of the story and then you add on another portion have, of the story. I have my small piece on. It's not small. <laughs> he thinks it's small, but it's not small. Because honestly, without you, I wouldn't be able to dream as big as, as I do. Thanks, bro. Welcome. Because y'all, I already said that I am the big dreamer, but he helps to make things like happen. So. I may be um, filming, editing, but he will be the one who gets it into the film festivals. Film festivals? I know. It's big. <laughs> it's big. It's a whole thing. Yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> we don't really know exactly how this is all going to go, but that's probably the exciting and terrifying mm -hmm. part of a dream. But we are deciding to be more focused on the exciting part of the dream. Hopefully you'll see these videos becoming better yeah. and better um, for my, what is it? Cinema, cinematography, <laughs> better cinematography and so forth. Yeah, and really a lot of that is just taking some of the, a lot of the skills that we've already shown or began to use and, um, and putting more preparation. And so our plan is just to study, to write, um, to film, to document, I'm excited to see what comes of it all and seeing how a story will unfold. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to work with you. Team Homer? Well, I thought we were going to do this. Oh, okay. You didn't, you didn't say that. Okay. Gotcha. All right. We got work on it. <laughs> Living and learning. <laughs>